A Reddit user posted his experience with as a 911 operator. I thought I should share it here. His story. It's kind of a running joke in my office that I always get the weirdest calls, and it's true. One of the more interesting ones I got was from a drunk guy who meant to call the cops and was trying to file a noise complaint about his own party. While some of my calls can be pretty strange, they're usually fairly tame. I've been pretty lucky because I haven't had too many disturbing or sad stories to tell from my years working as a 911 operator. If you're looking for something like that, I can point you to several of my colleagues because unfortunately, there's no shortage of those in this industry. The call that particularly sticks in my mind is one that I had about a year or two ago. I can honestly say that it's one of the most frightening experiences of my entire life, and think it's going to stick with me forever. It had actually been a fairly slow afternoon that day. I know it sounds kind of insensitive, but if you're not taking a call, this job can get pretty boring. I got stuck covering my friend's evening shift, and I didn't expect things to get more interesting. I was counting down the minutes until my shift ended when a call came through my line. I put the headset on and ran through the usual script. 9-11, what is your emergency? I asked. I think there's someone in my house, the voice sounded like it belonged to a young child. My heart sank. Calls from children were always the worst. We're trained to get as much information from each caller as possible. This makes it easier to more fully understand the situation as well as figure out which emergency services we need to dispatch. What's your name, sweetie? I kept my voice calm and upbeat. There was no need in scaring them any further than they undoubtedly already were. Elizabeth, she said softly. I think she might have been crying. That's a beautiful name. Mine's Amelia, even though I didn't show it, I was beginning to get nervous. This is very important. Can you tell me what's happening right now? The line was quiet for a moment, but then Elizabeth started talking, I think someone's in my house. Where are you parents? I asked. They're not home. I'm not sure where they are. I was pretty angry when I heard this. What kind of parents leave a little girl home alone this late at night? Is there anyone else there with you? Yeah, I think they're looking for me, Elizabeth began, but her voice abruptly stopped at the very end of her sentence. Had it not been for her quiet, frightened breaths, I would have thought she, or whoever else was there, hung up. They said my name. She was definitely crying now. Where are you right now? I heard a door close. In my parents' closet, she spoke a little louder now, probably thinking that the intruder wouldn't be able to hear her from in there. I hoped she was right. I was glad that she knew to hide. A lot of kids freeze up in dangerous situations like this, especially if their parents or an older sibling aren't there. I asked her for her address, which she gave to me but for the sake of privacy I will only say that Elizabeth's house was in a fairly nice neighborhood in my area. And it wasn't far from the police station, which was very helpful. Elizabeth, just focus on my voice. I need you to try and relax. I'm sending the police to your house right now, and they should be there in about five minutes. Can you hold on until then? Even though I would usually try to get a little more information about the intruder, I always tend to err on the side of caution when children call 911. I'd much rather send someone and have it be a false alarm than risk their safety. Elizabeth did not answer my question, and it took her longer than I was comfortable with to respond. When she did, it was only one word. Listen. I heard the phone crackle as she brought it away from her ear and held it out in front of her. At first, I didn't hear anything but as I focused on the background noise, I noticed a lot of whispering. I couldn't tell what they were saying, but it definitely sounded like it was coming from more than one person. 
I hoped the police would get there on time. As much as I help people with my job and as many lives as I've saved, it is always so frustrating that I can't do anything myself other than wait and talk. Elizabeth's voice came out in hushed sobs, he's coming up here. Please help. The police are almost there. I need you to be quiet so he doesn't hear you. You're going to be okay, sweetie, I promise. She seemed to calm down a bit. Everything was quiet for a moment, save for the whispering, which was much louder now. I still didn't know what they were saying, but I was sure it was coming from multiple people. I could pick out at least three distinct voices. When I heard a door creak open through the phone, my heart leapt. Elizabeth screamed, and I knew that the intruders had found her. I was so scared for her, and I desperately hoped that someone would be there to help soon. Are you okay? I need you to tell me what's going on. I was trying, and failing, to stop my voice from cracking. I couldn't let her know that I was afraid. There's a man, Elizabeth whispered. He has really long legs and a really big smile. My imagination was running away from me. I pictured this poor girl alone in the closet as an impossibly tall man towered over her. I heard another bang coming from somewhere in the house and someone yelling police. Thank God. I could hear Elizabeth crying as the whispers intensified. I still didn't understand how she only saw one person. There had to have been more than four. He isn't touching the floor. The line cut off. I frantically tried to re-establish the connection, but no matter how many times I tried, I was met with only silence on the other end. I would like to close with a message to any parents reading this, please. Please don't leave your young children home by themselves. I haven't heard anything about Elizabeth or her family in the year since this happened. The police only found the phone. Stay paranoid my friends.